What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into one of those little iOS features that quietly make your app feel more professional, network monitoring. We're gonna be using an NW Path Monitor component to detect when a user goes offline, comes back online, or switches from Wi-Fi to cellular, or has no connection at all. So this is something real production apps use every day. Instagram, TikTok, PayPal, you name it, I'm sure you've seen some notification pop up if you go offline all of a sudden. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to implement it inside your own app, the clean and modern way. So let's jump in. So just to do a quick demo of the app, this is the completed application. We can see that we're currently connected to the internet. I'm gonna to toggle my Wi-Fi off. And you guys will notice that it immediately picks up that change and says no connection, network not available. And that happened as soon as I toggled my Wi-Fi off and now I'm gonna to toggle it back on. Let's wait for it to connect. And if we hit retry, it will then detect that we are once again connected to the internet. So it's gonna be a really simple application. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna jump into Xcode and you guys will see that I'm just using the content unavailable view here to display a very simple uh, stack of components like with this image and this connected status. So the first thing we're gonna do is import network up at the top. This is going to allow us to access that network path monitor. So I'm gonna create a state private var called path, which is gonna be of type NW path. So this is my network path and this is what we're gonna use to monitor our internet connection. So here guys, we are gonna do a switch on our path status. So I'm gonna cut this code from the VStack and I'm gonna say switch path dot status. And you guys will notice that there's a couple different options we have here or cases. Satisfied means we're connected to the internet. So we'll go ahead and just paste our content unavailable view back in there. With unsatisfied, we are going to say Wi-Fi dot slash and we'll just say you're not connected. And we can also add a description later, a little bit later on with the reason that we are not connected and then requires connection. This one is just gonna be another content unavailable view that's gonna say connecting. And for this nil case, we'll just say unknown, we can't establish a network connection and we're actually just gonna change nil to default. We could wrap this up in an if let statement so the path isn't optional, but this is fine as well. So right now our network connection is unknown, guys. So here's what we need to do. We are going to make a private extension on our content view, and we are going to start writing out the functions that we need to check our network connection or reestablish one. So we're gonna say func start monitor, and this is going to be an asynchronous function. We're gonna have a func to stop our monitor, async. Actually, that's not asynchronous, my bad. And then we're gonna have a function to refresh our path, which is not async, that's just standard. And then we're going to have another function to stream our path updates. So I'm gonna say path updates stream. And this is going to return an async stream with an NW path. So we are going to use an asynchronous stream here to stream our network updates. If you guys don't know what an async stream is or aren't fully comfortable with it, you can check out our Mastering Swift concurrency course on the website at appstuff.io. The link for that is in the description. And we are currently having our biggest sale of the year at the time of filming this video, guys. Everything is 30% off. That includes all courses and memberships as well. So if you guys wanna become a member with us here at AppStuff, we have crazy discounts right now, and if you join up as a member, you get access to all of the content we have here on the website. That includes our fundamentals courses with things like Swift Concurrency and AI and machine learning, as well as our pro app clones, where we build full app clones from scratch with Swift UI and Firebase, and our Pro Plus clones as well. These are production grade applications that are continuations of some of the pro clones that can handle millions of users, and you guys get access to that if you wanna become a member here with us. And once again, everything is 30% off right now, guys. So make sure you check us out at appstuff.io. The link is in the description. So let's get back to the video. So we need to return an async stream from this function. So let's go ahead and say we want an async stream with a continuation inside of this closure. And we're gonna create a monitor here. 
which is going to equal our NW path monitor. And then we're going to say monitor dot path update handler. So this is a handler that receives network path updates. This is exactly what we want. And we get access to the sendable closure here that gives us that path back. So in that callback, we are going to uh, do this and we're going to say continuation dot yield our path. So that's how we're going to stream our path updates. And we are going to say monitor dot start on this queue. We're going to do this on a global background thread. We definitely don't want to do this on the main thread. We can check our network status on the background. And then when our continuation terminates guys, um, we are going to have this on termination closer where we stop our monitor. And here we actually need to add this QoS for quality of service to uh, start monitoring this on a background thread. So that's awesome. Next up guys, let's go ahead and uh, fill out our start monitor function where we're gonna consume the updates from this stream. So we're gonna say for try await path in path update stream. And then we're gonna set our path using the uh, updated path we get back from our stream. Path is equal to the path we get back from that stream. And guys, to refresh our path, we're just gonna say task await start monitor. And let's cover this stop monitor function here. We could simply do that from this closure, but if we needed to stop the monitor anywhere else, um, we're gonna just wanna set this monitor up as a state property. Right now, every time we get a path update, we're creating a new NW path monitor. Um, so we can clean that up a little bit. Let's just go up here and say at state private var monitor is of type NW path monitor. And here we can just say that our monitor is equal to that and add our optional chaining. And now from this function here, we could say monitor.cancel and monitor is equal to nil. So once again, you guys could add this in this closure here and you would avoid having to wrap this up in a main actor task. Um, just showing you some different ways of doing things here. So next up guys, all we need to do is now create a task on our VStack to start our monitor. So we're gonna say task await start monitor, and we should be good to go. So we're not gonna be testing this in the preview. We definitely wanna run our application. So let's go ahead and do that now. And it's that simple. Uh, I think that's all we have to do. And what you guys would wanna do in a production level application is probably monitor this at the root app level and have some sort of network monitor component. And anytime you get a change to your network connection, you would then want to display like a toast message or an alert at a root app level. But anyway, let's test this out. So go up in, uh, to your Wi-Fi, toggle it off. Notice that it almost immediately updates and says that we're no longer connected. So our asynchronous stream is successfully uh, streaming those path monitor updates. Now let's go ahead and see what happens if we turn it back on. You guys will notice that nothing changes if we turn it back on. So I'm not sure if this is just a simulator bug um, it, that doesn't respond correctly to the changes in your computer's Wi-Fi status. But what we're gonna do is add a refresh button. So this is where that refresh path is gonna come in. So inside of your unsatisfied block, go ahead and just create this button that is going to have the handler as our refresh path button, right? So then it's just going to start the monitoring once again. And if we go ahead and run our application, that button should show up and once we click retry and we're connected to the internet again, our path uh, status should correctly update. So once again, that could just be some simulator bugginess, but let's go ahead and toggle our Wi-Fi off once again. And you guys will notice that it doesn't even update once we toggle that off. But once I toggle it back on, then it's gonna say you're not connected. So it is a little strange on the simulator, but the core functionality is here, right? It's detecting network changes. And if we hit retry, it'll, you'll notice that we're connected to the internet there. So guys, one last little bonus feature we can uh, cover is in a description message to tell the user what exactly happened or why their network connection has failed. So I'm gonna add that as an extension here and you guys can pause the video and type this out. You can do a uh, switch on the nwpath.unsatisfiedreason. So we get access to 
a bunch of these options as to why our network connection is unsatisfied. And we can pass this along to our user uh, back up here. We could go to unsatisfied and add a description and say text path dot unsatisfied reason dot description. And we could say uh, a default value of an unknown error occurred or something like that. And let's go ahead and run this one more time and just test that out. And you guys will see a description message saying what exactly happened, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and toggle this off, toggle Wi-Fi off complete, and that works right away. So you guys can see that the simulator is just a little buggy. And here we can see that our network is not available. So let me go ahead and toggle my Wi-Fi back on. And now it's back on and I hit retry and it says that we're connected again. And if you guys like this video, make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We have a bunch of awesome free content here. The latest that I'm most excited about is building out this e-commerce app with Supabase. And this is sponsored by Supabase. So it's the real deal. And make sure you guys check that out and all of the other content we have here on YouTube. And if you guys are looking to go pro, make sure you check out the website at appstuff.io and take advantage of our biggest sale of the year. It ends December 1st, 2025. And once again, if you guys become a member here with us right now, it's 30% off. You get full unlimited access to everything we have here at AppStuff. So thanks for watching this video, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.